In this video, we will discuss the reader's writer's problem and see how it can be solved using semaphores. So what exactly is the reader's writer's problem? Let's suppose we have some data which is shared amongst a number of concurrent processes. So let's say this is some data and it is being accessed concurrently by a number of processes. Now these processes they can be of different types. Some processes can be only readers. That means these processes will only read the data. They will not perform any update on this data. They will not try to modify this data. So suppose if we have reader 1 process and reader 2 process, these two processes they are simply accessing the data and reading it. They are not performing any modification to it. And then we can have the writer's processes. So suppose if we have these writer's processes, these processes they can read data but they can also perform some write operations on that data. That means they can modify the data as well. So if we have these different kinds of processes, then what kind of synchronization is required? That means how can these processes be synchronized so that they can access this shared data? One is that multiple readers can be allowed to read at the same time. So if the processes that we are having are reader processes, then multiple processes can access this data because they are not making any changes or modifications to the data. They are only reading it. So multiple readers can access this data at the same time. However, only a single writer process should be allowed to access the shared data because this writer process is the one which is going to change the data. So when a writer process is accessing the data at that point in time, no other writer or no other reader should be allowed to access the data. So no writer or reader should be allowed to access this time this one writer is accessing a data. Because if writer 1 is making changes and writer 2 or writer 3 also start making changes then this will cause inconsistencies. Also if a writer process is making changes and a reader process wants to read the data, then it will be inconsistent data. So now let's see how this problem can be solved using the read semaphores. So we have this shared data and we have a writer process and a reader process and these writers and readers they want to access this shared data. We have a semaphore read write mutex which has been initialized to 1 and this controls the access to the data. So any process whether it is a writer process or whether it is a reader process if they can get this semaphore read write mutex then they will be able to access the data. So if it is a writer process if it wants to make changes to this data it will wait on this semaphore read write mutex. Once it gets the semaphore then it will perform the writing and then signal this semaphore back to show that the writing has been performed so this semaphore is released. We know that weight will decrement the semaphore and signal will increment the semaphore. This we have studied in a previous video. So waiting on this read write mutex semaphore will allow the writer process access to the data. It will make changes to the data and then once it has finished writing then it will signal the read write mutex semaphore that means it is going to release the semaphore. Now let's come to the reader process. So first of all we want that even if one reader gets access to this data then other readers can be allowed to access the data. So that means the, it is the responsibility of the first reader to get access or control of this semaphore which is granting access to this data. Also it will be the responsibility of the last reader to release this semaphore when it is getting uh, access, it has got access to the data and now it is exiting. So now there are two things that to be taken care of. We have seen that when a reader is process is accessing the data 
other readers are also allowed to access the data. So it is the responsibility of the first reader to get hold of this semaphore read write mutex which controls access to the data. Also if suppose there were n number of reader process, so it is the responsibility of the last reader process that when it is exiting then it should release this semaphore read write mutex. So now any other writer process which wishes to access the data is allowed to do so. So now let's see how a reader process works. So the reader process because it has to keep track on the number of readers accessing the data there is a variable read count which is initialized to zero. This read count variable this is an integer variable it tells how many readers are currently using or accessing the data. So initially it is zero. Let's say reader one starts running the process and it wants to access the data. So first of all it will have to increment the read count. Now read count since this is a shared variable amongst different reader processes. Now access to this read count also will be controlled by this semaphore mutex which has been initialized to 1. So if reader 1 wants to increment the read count because now it wishes to access the data, it will wait on this semaphore mutex, it will increment the read count. So read count will now become 1 and if read count is 1 that means this is the first process which is first reader process which is going to access the data. So it is a responsibility of this first reader process to get control of this semaphore read write mutex. So it will wait on read write mutex if it is the first process first reader process going in and once it has got it so and it has also incremented the read count so it will release this mutex semaphore which is accessing the read count controlling the access to the read count. So now what we have reader 1 process has incremented the read count and it has got access to the data by getting control of this semaphore read write mutex also. Then this read reader 1 process it will perform the reading and if it wants to exit after accessing the data then it will follow the rest of the instructions. But let's say it is still performing its reading and now process reader 2 wants to access this data. So again it will wait on this mutex because this mutex is controlling the increment or decrement of the read count. So the, a new reader process is going in so read count needs to be incremented. So again this new process will get control of this mutex semaphore increment the read count so this will this will become 2 and if read count is 1 but read count is not 1 because this is now the second reader process so this instruction this environment is not required and then this mutex semaphore which is accessing the read count variable will be released and it will also perform the reading. Now let us say R1 and R2 both have finished their reading and now R2 wants to exit. So this reader process R2 it wants to exit. So it is running its next instruction which is wait on mutex. Why? Because now it is exiting so it wants to decrement the read count. And who is controlling access to the read count? This semaphore mutex. So it will get control of this semaphore mutex. It will decrement the read count. So now from 2 it will become back to 1 and if read count is 0 but read count is not 0 so we do not go here and then it will release the semaphore mutex. So semaphore mutex is also released. Now let us say R1 has also finished its reading and now R1 also wants to exit. So R1 reads uh, runs its next instruction which is wait mutex because now it also is exiting so it has to release the read count decrement the read count variable. So it waits on mutex gets the mutex and decrements the read count. Now the read count uh, variable will become back to 0. So if read count is 0 this shows that now R1 is the last process 
which is exiting this access to data. This is the last reader process and if it is a last reader process that means now it has to release this read write mutex which was being used by all the readers. So, if the last process is exiting now, last reader process is ex exiting now, this semaphore has to be released. So, if read count is 0, that means the last process, last reader process is exiting, then we release the semaphore by doing a signal on this particular semaphore RW mutex and then release the read count semaphore also which is semaphore mutex. Now, only when this semaphore RW mutex has been released by the last reader, then only any writer process can now try to get control of this data or if any new reader process wants to come in, then again they can use this semaphore read write mutex. So, we have seen now how this read write mutex gives access to this data. So, any reader or a writer process which wants to act control or access this data, it will have to get this semaphore. If the reader process has got this semaphore, then other reader processes they do not need, then they can access this data directly. Only what they have to do is that whenever they are going to access this data, they have to increment the count of this read count and when they are exiting then they have to decrement this read count and then again for access to this read count semaphore mutex is being used by all the readers. Only the first reader gets control of this read write mutex semaphore and only the last reader releases this semaphore. Once this semaphore read write mutex has been released then any other reader or writer process can get control of it. So, this is how semaphore is used to solve the readers writers problem.